I am Basant Misra, Consultant Neurosurgeon and Head of Department of Neurosurgery and Gamma Knife Surgery, Hinduja National Hospital, Mumbai, India. I am also the Secretary of the World Federation of Neurological Surgery. Well, there are a lot of advances in neurosurgery over the period of years. In the last four decades, I have been practicing neurosurgery for the last 36 years. When we started, neurosurgery was very primitive, at least in India. Over the period of years, neurosurgery in India is as good as anywhere in the world. We have all the technology that is available and today there is, I cannot think of a condition where a patient has to go to the West for treatment of neurosurgery. Everything that is, that is necessary is available in India. And the trend is towards minimalism. You know, previously we had to do a major surgery with a big opening, the patient in the ICU for a long time, there are significant risks of patient getting damaged. Today the patient comes to the hospital, walking goes away walking. And there are many procedures which you do under local anesthesia without a cut, without anesthesia, and the patient goes back next day working. For example, we have this gamma knife radio surgery which we started in, in, uh, in Hinduja Hospital the first time in South Asia in 1997. So we are right up there and in gamma knife radio surgery you can treat a brain tumor, you can treat a vascular malformation. Vascular malformation is something which produces brain hemorrhage, devastating brain hemorrhage. The patient can die, the patient can remain paralyzed and all these things can be treated by gamma knife radio surgery without a cut without an anesthesia and the patient goes back to work next day. Some of the latest advances is um, uh, computer guided endoscopic neurosurgery. The other thing is MRI guided neurosurgery, ultrasound guided neurosurgery. All these are used to reduce the, the damage to the brain uh, and uh, do through minimal uh, injury to the brain and the skull. So the patient's quality of life doesn't suffer. So the main emphasis today is for us is to go back, the patient goes back in the state he came in. So we try to do things today where the patient can go back, be functional at the highest level and remain stable, the disease remains stable. So to, towards that end, the new things which are coming is robotic surgery. Still not on, still clinically not happening. It is still in the lab, but that's coming. The other thing is there are things which will change by genes. And then there is telemedicine. You know, like for example, I'm, I'm, I'm specialist in something and there is a remote area in the country where the gentleman has no access to the, the technology. So I can remotely control the surgery from sitting in Mumbai to do it in somewhere in, uh, in a very remote area in India. There are, you know, genes are, you know, every, every disease is being now uh, identified, fingerprinted uh, by its genes. Similarly, in, there are conditions in neurosurgery which are going to be uh, significantly uh, the management will go significantly change depending on the genetic or the genome or the genetic fingerprint of that disease. And some of these diseases like malignant tumors of the brain probably will not be in future be uh, you know taken out like what we do today. We do major surgeries, try to remove every part of it as much as possible so that patient has a uh, good and long survival. Uh, I predict that in next 10 years probably uh, this will change. What we'll do, we'll still operating, we'll be still be operating because we need to take out some part of the tissue, some part of the tumor to, to test it and find out what, what it is and what its genetic profile. But we won't be doing major surgeries which have risks. Once we do that and there will be a genetic study, uh, find out genes and then what is called personalized medicine, targeted therapy will be the way to go, I think. You have every single thing today, every single uh, treatment we do has is protocol based and the guidelines are there. And what it does, it, it reduces the errors. You know, if you have a guideline, then the, the treatment becomes uniform anywhere in the world. We have, in our hospital, we have guidelines. 
the national society has guidelines the world federation has guidelines every uh, co country of neurosurgical society they come with guidelines we do not have guidelines for everything because we have still not understood everything but most m common neurosurgical procedures which we do today have guidelines and there are protocols to follow the other advantage of having this is uh, you know you land up in problem we will have problem uh, medicine is not true science uh, it, it's actually applied science because every single human being is different it's not like 2 plus 2 is 4 it's not mathematics so once you have guidelines we'll have problems there will be complications but once you have followed a particular protocol and guideline uh, the chances that patient will come out unscathed is better and if the, the chances that the doctor is not going to suffer from medical problem is very high well, not only neurosurgery, Hinduja Hospital is the torchbearer, I think, in private, uh, neuro, private medicine uh, in Mumbai and in India. Uh, the history is, this is the first hospital in Mumbai which started the system of, uh, you know, full-time system, which is called consultants are in the hospital, full-time base, that means they are at one place. So the, the patients have access 24-7 to the, the best uh, in, in the field. <laughs> there are many, many, the complex, every, every neurosurgical procedure is very, very complex. So to name one is very difficult, but what, you know, people admire uh, and we, we have uh, been, uh, you know, kind of uh, rated as the best uh, in the field is the complex giant aneurysms. You know, these are balloons in the blood vessels. In the normal blood vessels, they become ballooned, they become weak, and they produce devastating hemorrhage. And the risk of having dying of a brain hemorrhage from an aneurysm is about 50%. And the patient comes to you, the 30% go back to the society functional. And uh, I am rated as one of the best in the field. So, this, for example, there is the, we have the brain, which have the brain stem, which is the main you know, area the where it controls everything in the body, the breathing, the motor power, the senses, sense, everything is controlled there. Now, we had a case when a, we had a child who had come from, was a pharmacist, his, his father actually was a pharmacist. He came from, I don't want to give the details because there are privacy concerns there, but he's a child who was two years old and who came in coma to us. And there were many things we did and the finally now everything failed and then we operated which is something still one of the unique cases in the world the child now goes to school this is seven years back and child is almost normal to from a coma which was thought to be untreatable by many in the world many they had sent out to everywhere child today is normal and that was the diagnosis was a what's called a basilar top giant calcified aneurysm even today the chances of this procedure, the patient coming out of it is less than 20%. So as I said, this is one of the fastest growing departments or the fastest growing disciplines in medicine because we have still not understood the major, major uh, parts of brain because brain is the last frontier. You all know I'm talking, you're talking to me, we understand, it's all brain. And uh, your life today is, goes when the brain goes, the brain death is death. So the things which we have still not understood is mind. We have understood the anatomy of the brain significantly. We have understood the function of the brain uh, significantly. But we have still not understood or we have understood very poorly what is the connection between brain and the mind. The emotions, the function, why does anybody react the way he reacts when I talk to you or I, I, somebody has a fight? And that's being, that's being explored with the advances in the MR technology, medical, the, the magnetic resonance imaging, and then we have the functional um, studies which are happening. So neurology, neurosurgery, and neuropsychiatry are some things which, which are going to, you know, kind of in the forefront of research. And also, uh, I think the other thing which is going to change the way we treat today is uh, genes, robotics, and the telemedicine.